Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Hayemiz Vachem Samach Tes. We are six lines from the top of the Ahmed Amar Rabbi Yitzchak Shamati. I heard from my Rabbi Shtaim. Two halachis regarding uh, the involvement of a Zor, of a non kohen with respect to Avoida activity. In one situation, he's better off, the, the carbon is better off than the other one. Shamati Shtaim. I heard two halachis. One, Achas was Kmitzas Zor. Suppose a Zor does Kmitza on a Mincha. The Achas, the other halacha regarding a Zor's involvement related to Malika's Zor, where a Zor did Malika to a, a carbon, you know, bird. What's the difference? Achas, in one situation, Tayrate, even if the material was brought up onto the Mizbeach, it must be removed and taken down. The Achas, like Tayrate, in the second situation, we say, okay, once it's up, it stays up. I'm not sure which one is what. We speak about kmitz of a mincha, malika of a, of a bird. One is better than the other. One will stay up, one will come down. Well, done, I'm not sure. And the, uh, there's a girl, so Eze, he, which one is which? Amar I'll uh, try to suggest clarity on this. Mistabra, it makes sense to me that kmitz are malika are my kmitza, the mincha is taken off the mizbeach, so the kmitza of the, of the zar provided no benefit to the mincha. It's null and void. Whereas malika, if he did malika, that's left on the mizbeach. Why? What's the difference? Ma'ishna, malika. Why would malika be better? The yashna bebama. Because we find that elsewhere, i.e. by a, a bama, which is an altar outside the Beis Hamidash, during, you know, there's certain times in in history, where there was no Beis Hamidrash, there was no Mishkan, they had a Bama. And over there, there's no uh, Kayin requirement. Even a Zar, even Israel can offer Karbanas. Since he has that ability at a Bama setting, um, so likewise, even in a Beis Hamidrash, his act of Malika, you know, carries some value, has some element of validity to it, and therefore, once it's on the Mizbeach, it stays here. Well, if so, then Kmitza the same story. Kmitza nam yeshna bama. Well, the same thing with Kmitza. Since it works by the bama, it should work to some extent over here. Bechitim, perhaps you'll say, in mecha bama. That in a bama, you can only bring animal carbonis. You can't bring menaches. So you can't use that as a, you know, as a precedent. Well, if so, in a nami bama. If there's no mincha, there's no birds. It goes hand in hand. Dom rav sheshes. As Rav Sheshis explains to us, according to the opinion that Menachas were offered at the Bama, likewise birds. And same in reverse, according to the opinion that only animal carbonis were offered at the Bama, no Mincha, no birds. My time, why Zvachim? The Pasuk speaks about Zvachim, animal carbonis, which have Shechita. They are meant to be brought at a Bama. Well, I'm and not uh, you know mincha material. Well, is likewise no birds either, so you can't differentiate either both yes or both not. So why are we drawing that line between a zar doing malika? Where we say it's uh, it's passable, whereas by kmitza we say it's non-starter. Because the ayfais you can do by the bama, well, kmitza as well. The answer is like this. Whereas when it comes to um, Malika, since it works by the Bama, it works in the Beis Hamidrash to some extent, that once it's on the Mizbech, it stays there. But by Mincha, you can't draw that analysis. You can't draw that comparison because, true, a Zar can do Kmitza of a Mincha by a Bama. That's perhaps because there's no Kiddush Bikhlisharis. There's no sanctifying the mincha material in a holy vessel in the Bama setting. There's no klisharis there. So certainly the Zar can get involved. It's not, it's not on a high level. It's not on the same level as the mincha and the Beis Hamidash. So you can't really draw a comparison between the two. Just because you can do the kmitza at the Bama with the mincha is of a lower level. Shouldn't mean he can do it in the Beis Hamidash. You can't compare. 
Hence, we say the Kmitzah of Azar and Beis Amidash is null and void. Completely irrelevant. Versus the uh, Malika, since it works totally by the, uh, by the Bama, with no uh, strings attached. Likewise, to a certain extent, there's an element of validity to it in the Beis Amidash as well. If the Zara does it, the bird is on the Mizbech, it stays here and doesn't come down. Okay, so Rabbi tells us, I heard two halachas regarding Azar's involvement, Kmitsa and Malika. In one we say, it stays on the Mizbech. In the other case, it comes down. Chizkeh sheds light. He says, look, Kmitsa comes off. Malika stays up. Malika is learned from the Bama. Kmitsa cannot learn from Bama. Mishnah continues. Malak v'smoyla v'layla v'chul. So, we learn from the uh, Mishnah that if uh, a bird had experienced Malika, even though the Malika was unsuccessful at night, using his left hand, you don't consider it a dead bird, like an Avela, which is metame upon swallowing, metame besablia. Since it experienced Malika to some extent, it has the status of a, of a, a regular bird, as though it was shechted properly, and it's not going to be metame. Tanur here comes a Brisa, providing a source. That even a deficient Malika will spare the bird from Tuma. Tanarabon, Yachel Tehi Malika. She lived near Matame Begadim Beis Abliya. Now, let's just go take a step back. Perhaps any bird that had Malika done to it, even a Kashra Malika, Matame Begadim Beis Abliya, perhaps even a Malika inside the Beis Abliyash. It's not considered like a shechita. The bird is still an avela, and if one would swallow, one would eat it. He absorbs tumah to himself and to his begotten. Maybe tamaloy, but no. Pasuk in describing, in presenting, the guidelines of a dead bird being metame says like this. So the full pasuk reads like this: V'chol nefesh asher toichal nevelo atreif a be'ezrech a be'ger v'chibes begada v'rochas b'mayim v'tomed orav etar. Person eats a bird which is nevelo atreifa. It's you know gives him tumah. Tamalayim nevelo. It has to be a nevelo dead bird. Ask him what do you mean? If a bird experienced malika, it's also a dead bird. Hanami nevelo. He. It didn't experience a shechita. It was just a, a Malika. Who says... Um, who says that it's not going to be um, Matami? Now Rashi points out. You know, we do know that a Chatos bird will uh, be consumed by the Kayhana, despite it having experienced only Malika. Says Rashi, okay, maybe that's an exception. It's like there's a Kasev. We have a possible Chal Chatoy, some discussed back on uh, that Mamdel that Rashi brings. Yeah, over there, uh, Malika will, uh, will permit it. But perhaps a, a different type, an Oila. Oila word. That experienced Malika. It's not meant for the Kehanim's consumption. Perhaps it's merely like a dead bird. And if one should decide to eat it, his Mitai becomes Tame. How do we know it's not so? Hanami Neveli. Ella. Rather, we continue in the same Pasuk. It says, Nevelu Atrefa. Ella Tamalim Atrefa. And that teaches us like this. In order for something to be Matami, it has to be comparable to a Trefa. Ma Trefa Shein Mataras is Trefa was speaking about a, a bird or an animal who had a you know serious internal illness, internal wound, critical wound. And uh, it's forbidden for consumption, right? So ma trefa she is just like the trefa experience, trefa episode, has no positive, you know, uh, effect on this entity on this bird. It's not matter any iser that was previously there. Afko likewise, the nevela label discussed right near the, the word trefa is also that type of novella experience which has absolutely no positive impact and does not matter any previously forbidden elements and then we say this is a full-fledged novella 
and is metamic, as opposed to Malika by a Kachan bird in the base Hamikdash. Yotzer Malika, she lifnim, which certainly has a positive effect on the bird. She Hayli Materasa says she's Mata Yisurin. Rashi explains what kind of Yisur. During its lifetime, it was not suitable as a carbon. Now it is. So the Malika has a permissible uh, you know, effect on the bird. So it's not reminiscent of Trefa, Ein Metame, it's not going to be Metame a person. It doesn't have that uh, trigger point. Hevi Amoylek Kachem Bechutz, Umoylek Chulen, Bein Mebifnim, Maybe Bechutz. So based on this concept, not only is there Malika of Kachem in the base of Midrash properly, going to spirit of Tumma, let's take it a step further. Sorry, so only, only, only if it's done properly. Malika of the Kachim in the base Hamidash is going to spirit of Tomukot's Matar is. But suppose he's Hamoyle Kachim Machus, he does Malika on the Kachim outside the building improperly. Or does Malika on Hulan birds, where Malika is not called for. That Malika has absolutely no you know, permissible properties to it. It's not Matar any Surim. In which case, we treat it like a plain and simple dead bird and it's Matami. Hamoylek kachem bechutz, umoylek chulen bein mibefnim. Whether in the mikdash, bein bechutz, whether outside, hoyl bein matir and seisur, they're not matir and yisur. They treat like a plain avela, and they are metamen begadim avesabli. Now, what about? And this, by the way, corresponds with the Mishnah, who told us the same. Now, what about shchita done to a bird, whether kachem or chulen? Tani, he comes another price. In these, we say it's tahar, and we'll explain why. Okay, he takes a chulen bird and does shechita in the base of Improperly, but the shechita is a valid shechita. I mean, the, uh, the location is off. But after all, there was a shechita. The bird cannot be eaten, but, right? It didn't just die. It was, it was an experienced shechita. Or he did shechita to a kachim bird, whether inside or out. Of course, a kachim bird is meant to experience malika, not shechita. So perhaps I would think that all these, the bird is metama abesabli, it's metame a person. Once again, back to that apostle, only in Avela is metame. Ask the what do you mean? This is a classic Navela. Hanami Navelahi. Rashi explains. Why would I consider it Navela? Because this uh, process applied to the bird was inappropriate, was, un- was uncalled for. Not meant to do shechita on a chulen bird in the base of Midrash. It's not meant to be shechted there. Likewise, shechita is not really applicable to a kachim bird at all. It's maybe treated like a regular, regular novella. El, or rather, tamalim et trefa. Let's focus on the word trefa on the Pasuk. As follows. So earlier we learned uh, trefa one way. Now we're going to sort of apply it a bit differently. Ma trefa, just like a trefa. So we're meant to compare all to the trefa. Just like the Isser of Trefa applies equally inside the Midrash, like outside, right? It's not location oriented. Likewise, the, um, the, the, the Tumma. Relating to a, a novella of an oif tahir is only going to be uh, present in a, uh, a setting, in a situation which is equally applicable inside or outside, in the midrash or outside, as opposed to the yotzer shchitas chulim as opposed to a chulim bird shechter inside the midrash. That issue is not relevant outside. So it's not Shabbos. It's not treated the same inside and out, because outside the Midrash, it's a perfectly shechted bird. So Tuma doesn't apply. And likewise, with Kachim, Shechitan Kachim, whether inside or outside. Bein Mibifnim, Bein Bachutz. And soon the Gemara will explain why. Hoyel, so since in all these, Veloy Shavu, Bifnim Ki Bachutz, the issue does not apply equally inside or out. Ein Metamin, God must have it doesn't have the Tuma. Because it's not similar to a treif. Hold it, says him, one second. I understand the first case you mentioned. Shechting a chulen bird inside, yeah, the issue is not relevant outside, so it's not 
you know, equally applicable, so it doesn't fit this, uh, you know, criteria. Okay, that's uh, understood. But the second case you mentioned, that's a problem anywhere, inside or outside. Whether it's inside or outside, it's possible. So, of course, it fits the bill. It should be Matami. I'm a rubber. I'll tell you why it's not an issue. We find in some settings that, in fact, the shechita of even a kachim bird has validity, which lends to this understanding that, in fact, a kachim bird shechita is not considered dead, whether inside or outside. Where, you know, if we take a, a kachim bird and you take it out of the Middash and you do shechita, it's called shechita chutz, it's a severe uh, transgression, it's karis, uh, you know, for doing so. So although he didn't do Malika, which is really the um, appropriate method for the Kachim bird, he did Shechita. He's still going to be Chayv. Rashi brings a Pasuk later. Oy, oy, asher yishchat, shechita soif. Even though he did something inappropriate for the Kachim bird, he did Shechita. But if it's done outside the Midrash, he is liable for Shechita So you see that Shechita on a Kachim bird has, has meaning, has value. And by extension, if it's done in the Migdash itself, don't say it's a dead bird. If the Shechita on the Kachim bird out of the Migdash, accomplished, so to speak, in a negative way, right? Accomplished L'chai V'Kars, to give the person Kars, wouldn't you think the same type of Shechita, whether outside or inside, can spirit of the Nevela status. It's not a dead bird. It experienced a... Uh, Halachically, you know, uh, sanctioned, so to speak, experience of death, of, of life termination. It's not just a dead bird. Okay? Ask the Gemara. Ashkan Chutz. Fine, so that's, um, that's good for the outside, Shrita. Pnim What about... What about in the Migdash itself? Fine, you've explained, you've addressed the shechita of the uh, kachim bird out of the out of the Migdash. Since it has uh, carries weight regarding the iser, so it's it's considered a non-available. But what about if the shechita took place in the base of Migdash? That's not shechita chutz, right? Ashkan chutz that addresses shechita of the kachim bird outside if it has a. Uh, Shechita value for this, so it's also considered for the uh, Tumah as well. But the Shechita of the Kachar bird put him inside the Midrash. Manal, how do we know it's going to spirit of Tumah? Hayol, v'lo yishav b'fnim ki b'chutz, because uh, you can't consider it uh, Tumah outside, not inside. If it's this experience, will spirit of Tumah outside the Midrash, likewise, if it was done in the Midrash itself. Okay, so at this point we learned that Shechita done to a Chulun bird outside the Migdash or inside will spear it from Tumah because just like when it was done outside it's spirit of Tumah and Rashi points out even if it wasn't a proper Shechita even if it was a tray for bird which wasn't, you know, kasha for consumption once the Shechita was done to it it spears it of Tumah as we're going to see later in the, in the Mishnah so since it's spirit of Tumah the Shechita spears it of Tumah outside likewise inside because, you know, they're on the same footing Right? And that's what's uh, learned from the uh, comparison to the treifa. Treifa is an issue all over. So only then do we say that it's going to be matami. But if something is a non-issue anywhere, right, in some format, in some place, then it can't be an issue anywhere. Right? So since shechita will spare the chulen bird in some situation, like outside the Midrash, likewise in the Midrash as well. Uh, same thing with shechita to a kachim bird. Since it has validity when done outside the Bidash, with respect to uh, you know, negative consequences of the Yeshchut Echutz, likewise, it has a similar effect in the Migdash, and it will spare it from, from Tum. Now let's shift over to Malika on these birds, Ihachi. So going along with this concept of you know, universal, universality, that it has to be equally applicable all over the place. Otherwise, right, it's all or nothing. Ihachi, Malak Kachim Bechutz Nami. The same... Analogy can be applied to Malik of a Kachim bird. 
Even outside the Mikdash. You tell me it's totally dead and Matami, why? Not like there shouldn't be Tumi there either. You know why? Because when the, this same act was done in the Mikdash, then it's perfectly fine, right? And that's the ideal. You do Malik on a Kacha bird, perfectly fine. So there's no Tumi there. Well, if there's no Tumi there, then there can't be Tumi here, right? It's universal, right? It has to be equally applicable in all locations. Yeah, if that's the case, going along with this system, Molech, Kachim, Uchutz, Nami, Loi, do Malik on a Kachim bird out of the Mikdash, it should also be saved from Tumma. The Loi Shavu, Bifnim, Kibuchutz, because the issue is not equally applicable inside and outside. Amar of Shim Barashi, ah, big difference. You try to compare a deficient, failed carbon, Malika outside, which makes it possible. Uh, well, well, because if inside it works, certainly outside. Inside is a properly processed carbon, right? You can't compare one to the other. Until now, we discussed comparing inside to the outside, outside to the inside, in terms of you know improperly processed situations. And since uh, the tumma is. is you know, he's spirit of Tum in one setting, likewise in the other. But here you're trying to compare apples to, you're trying to compare a carbon which is puzzle to a carbon which is kasher. No, uh, that's an unfair comparison. Amr of Simi Barashi Donan, we can learn, we can compare Dava Shalai Bech Shayroi, a situation which is not appropriate, Midava Shalai Bech Shayroi from another situation which is likewise somewhat efficient. We compare the two, if it works there, it works here. But here you're trying to compare failed. To uh, to successful, right? If it ain't done, you can't compare Dava Shleib Echshera, Malika on a Kachim bird outside, which is a failed operation, with Dava Shleib from the Malika taking place in the Middle East, which is a successful operation. You can't compare. And therefore, although Malika works inside, but not outside. But law, you can't compare, really? By the time we have a Brisa, Menayim Liyetsi, Shemal Liyerit. Back to that halacha that I, even a deficient carbon. Placed on the mizbeach stays there. Even a carbon which was yaitzah left the premises and came back. How do we know shemol layer? Once it's on mizbeach, you don't take it off. Why? Shari yaitzah kasher b'bam. Because by the bama, there's no concept of leaving the premises. There's no, uh, there are no boundaries. So since it works by the bama, it works somewhat by the mizbeach. Again, you're comparing deficient to uh, to successful, right? How could you? The Yaitse is an issue by Besam Middash. It's not an issue by the Imam. How could you compare? So the more you're right. We're not really meaning to compare. Tana, the Tana who presented that uh, analogy to compare to the Bama, Azoy's Teres Oila Riba Samachle. He was really including it from the Lashon of Zoy's Teres Oila. Anything which is Oila goes on the back stays up there. Samachle, that's really his source. The other discussion was just um, to make it more plausible. Okay, so in summation. A dead bird is metami bebeis hablia, unless it experienced shchita. Now shchita will spirit of, of any tumma, even if it's shchita on on chulin bifnim or shchita on kach and bifnim or bachutz. But regarding malika, uh, that only works if it's done properly. Malika of kach and bifnim, but outside it's tummy and likewise malika on chulin is tummy as well. Malak bifnim says trefa says the mission. Suppose it was discovered as a trefa. Which is pretty much inedible now. It's usher. After Malika. Okay, so you're not going to eat it. What about Bimatami? The person decides to eat it to swallow. Is it going to be Bimatami here? Shall we treat it like a plain dead bird? Or, after all, it experienced a halachically mandated life termination act, which is Malika. Rameo Imer, Einoi Metame, Beves Ablia. It's not going to transfer to me. It's not a dead bird. However, it is metame. He says, Malika on a bird, which turned out to be a trefo, or even shechita, would not uh, protect it from tumor. If it was a successful operation, fine. But if it was discovered to be a trefo, inedible, it's as though it was never really, you know, shechted or, or nimlak, it's as good as dead. Abner Abmer, let me prove my position, that a shechita, or Malika, on a bird that was discovered to be Trefa, is still going to spear it of Tumah. Kabachai, based on Kabachai. Let's, uh, let's base it on the um, starting point here. Here's, here's a, a, an animal. A behemoth. That was discovered a Trefa after Shechita. All agree. All will agree. Even Rabbi will agree. We'll see it in the Gemara later. Based on a Pasuk that um, there's no Tumas Nevei. 
Likewise, says Rameer, if it works over there, certainly by the bird, which in a way, to begin with, only had a lighter form of tumma. And certainly it can be spirit of that tumma. Let's see. Kabachim. Ibn Niblas Behemo. Even a dead animal. Shematama Bamaga Ubamasa. That contains a higher level of tumma. It transfers tumma simply by touching it, by lifting it. So despite its higher level of tumma, Shritasa Mataras Trifasa Matumasa. The shechita on that behema will spirit of its this of this severe tumma, despite it had it being discovered to be a trefa. Certainly, wouldn't you expect the same by a bird, which to begin with has a lighter tumma? Niblas ha'iv sheina matama b'magavamasa doesn't have those tumas because a dead bird only transmits through swallowing. So to begin with, it's lighter and easier. Ain't it? Didn't wouldn't you agree? Shdei. That once Shkita was done to this bird, even though it was discovered to be a trefa, it will still be spirit of Tuma. Now, by extension, we'll apply the same to Malika, which is also a halachically mandated you know, process applied to a bird. So just as we find with Shkita, that the Shkita of a, a bird, which is meant to enable it for consumption, and likewise, it will spear it from Tumah even when discovered to be a Trefa. After Malikasa, likewise a Malika. Of a Kachim bird, which is the appropriate method, which enables it for consumption, when it's, you know, uh, healthy, not Trefa. Likewise, to tire Trefa, Masa. You can spare the, uh, the Trefa from being Tumah. Okay, so the starting point is shechita by a behemoth trefa is metahir. All agree. Shechita by a bird. Or malika by a bird. According to Meir, is metahir as well. Rabbi just says, no, nothing doing. By the bird, trefa is tummy. Rabbi Yassi Eimer. Rabbi Yassi sort of uh, strikes a compromise. Shechita will spare the bird, but not malika. Because after all, you're comparing the bird to the behemoth, which only has shechita. Daya, it makes sense. It's fear that will compare it only kidnivlas behema. That the bird should be empowered like the navel of a behema, which means just like over there shchitasa mitaharsa, v'loim lekasa the shchita can do the trick, not malika. Just as by the behema, shchita is effective, not malika. It has no malikas. Likewise, with the bird shchita can do it, but not malika. Okay, so according to all shchita, shchita of a behema treifa works. The spirit of Tumah. What about a bird? Contra Buddha? No. Contra May, even Malika. Contra Basi, only Shkita, not Malika. Based on Daya. Now, you can't learn more than the source. The source here is Behema, which is limited to Shkita. Likewise, Shkita of a bird works, but not Malika. Now, Rameer expanded it to Malika as well. Rameer, like Dorish, Daya, he doesn't. Uh, Hold of the Daya concept, but Daya de Raisa, what's sourced in the Torah. The Sani, we have a Raisa, we didn't come to and how do you apply a Kabachimer? What do we find it in the Torah? By Miriam and Avia, by Yemen Hashem and Moshe, Avia, Yorik, Rag, Bufanel, imagine her father would have insulted her. She would have been isolated for seven days, right? Kabachim, the Shechina, Baras, Yem, certainly if the Shechina had that experience with her, of course, it should last for 14 days, so why only seven? Allah Daya, love Ibn Adin, Glaze Kenidin, it's sufficient. Daya, it's sufficient. Love him and I didn't, something which is learned from a certain, you know, source. Leos Kenida. Right? You learn from the Din, from the Kavach From a Nidan, from a certain, you know, source. You can't be stronger than that source. So you're basing the Shechina's experience on the Father's experience, which is limited to seven days, likewise Shechina. You're basing the bird on the animal, limited to Shechita. Amar Rabbi Yisro Bar Abban Rabbi Meir Kura Ashkach Vadarish Rabbi Meir who expanded it to Malika as well he found a pasuk to provide a source for that Zoyis Teiras Abhema Vaif okay so this system applies to Abhema and Oif now in what way is Abhema equal to an Oif each one has its own distinct track Vichi Beizay Teira and what uh, concepts Shavs Abhema Oif is Abhema comparable to a bird Vaif Abhema a bird to an animal look Abhema is Matam Vamagav Masa Whereas a bird, uh, an animal, 
imparts too much through touching, through contact, through carrying. Oif doesn't have that ability. Oif ain't a metame b'bagamasa. Likewise, Oif metame b'gadam abe sablia. And Oif has something unique. You can absorb tumma by just swallowing it, even though it's in a hidden place in your neck, in your throat. You get that tumma, something which is distinct, distinct and unique to a bird, which an animal doesn't have. Beima ina metama begadam ablei sablei. So, in what way is the Torah comparing the two? El lemlach rather to tell you like this regarding our Mishnah, regarding spearing it of tumma, ma behimah just like by an animal. Dovarav shemach shira lachila the act of shchita which permits it for consumption metayer trifasa metamasa. Likewise, will spirit of tumma even if it was discovered to be a treif afayf likewise by a bird the same thing. Dovarav shemach shira lachila. Whatever typically enables it for consumption, Rashi points out, even Malika. Right? Has the ability to be metire to fossa mitamasa. Okay, so going to the mayor, we have a separate source. But even Malika of a bird, which was then discovered to be a trefa, is spirit of Tum. Vira Yudha, who disagrees. He says, no, no, no. Nothing doing, right? A bird, treifa, is going to be tame. Shechita doesn't help it. Why? Where is he coming from? My time. A krash kadar. She also had a pasuk to provide a source for his position. So this is the, the pasuk which discusses that bird, which is metame. Right? The pasuk that we read earlier. Right? It makes him tame. Now the obvious question is, nevela I understand, it's a dead bird. But why mention treifa? Who cares if it has an internal wound? Who cares about the cause of death? The fact is, is it dead or not? Nevelo treifa. Omar Rabbi, the treifa lemon number. Why did Torah even bother mentioning the word treifa? Look, im treifa chayfa. Treifa is considered halachically alive, and eventually, you know, it died, and it's a nevela. So then, uh, that's a regular nevela. Nevela amur. We already discussed nevela. Im treifa and chayf. Treifa is not halachically considered alive. It's on the verge of death, so it's already now like a nevela. Why give it its own <laughs> category? Im treifa and chayf. Hari b'chol nevela. It's included nevela. So why mention nevela? Ella, love a treifa shinishchat shemitam. Rather, here the pasuk is telling you that a bird that experienced shchita, valid shchita, but it was discovered to be a treifa, it's not ready for consumption. It's as though it died. It was killed. It's an avila, and it's mitam. Amalei Rav Shezri. So Shezri responds. He says like this: Ella miata. If that's what you learn from the word treifa. Let's take a look at another pasuk, a totally different topic. The chesiv we have a pasuk bechelav nevelav, bechelav treifa. This is a totally different discussion regarding uh, an animal's chelav, the fats. Pasuk has an interesting concept. Even if the animal dies and the flesh is now metame, but the chelav, eh, you could take it and use it for, uh, you know, processing your hides, your skin. It's not going to be metame. Chelav is a totally different component of the animal. It's not metame. And the pasuk says bechelav nevelav, bechelav treifa. Same question. Why mention treifa? It's just another, you know, variety of of, of dead. Hasam nami neva. Same question could be asked over there. Im treifa chaya. If he's alive, her nevela mura eventually died. He did nevela. Im treifa nechayva. Treifa is not considered halachically alive. Her bechal nevela. It's already included nevela. Why even mention treifa as a separate a being? Ella lahavi treifa shishachta shechal batar. Oh, so according to your, you know, continue with your uh, train of thought. The pasuk is addressing an animal which was discovered to be a treifa. After Shechita. To say that even there we say, you know, the Chelev is, is Tahar. What for? What's the purpose? <laughs> you know, the, the, the main point of the Torah there is to tell you, even if an animal actually died on you, in which case the buster is Metam, you know the Chelev is a different entity, it's not Metam. But if it, the, uh, the animal was Shechita properly, and then discovered to be a treifa. All agree, even the Mishnah, all agree. Even Rabbi Yudha, Rabbi Yudha, everybody agrees. A behemoth who experienced shechita and then was discovered to be a treifa is not going to be metame, not the flesh and certainly not the chelav. So why even point out that the chelav is tar? Of course, the whole thing is tar. It would be totally redundant and superfluous to get into this. Machlaldi, metame, do you mean that the animal itself is metame, which necessitates pointing out that the chelav is different and the chelav is tar? Of course not. The, the basar itself is still to her. We learned it in the The animal dies. Right? This is the pasuk about an available matami. Some in some cases. What do you mean in some cases? 
Not every dead animal is matami. Miktas behema matama. Miktas behema ain't a matama. Some dead animals are matami, some not. Ve'ezah says, which one is not? Zuh treifa sheshachta. If you shechted an animal, and then it was discovered to be a treifa, it's not going to be matami, according to all shaitas, as we said in the mission. Right? This was the starting point that Ramirez Kavachayim, all agree. A shechted animal is tar. So you can't learn the word treifa as you had proposed to discuss a, a treifa animal that was shechted. There would be no reason to, to discuss that type of case and allow the chaylev and free it of, of, of tumor. The whole animal is not tumor. Oh, Ella, so rather, you have to find another application for the word treifa in this pasuk. I was speaking about this second pasuk, the pasuk about the chaylev. Let's just... Uh, just for clarity, we have two psukim, right? Pasuk number one, which was reviewed as pasuk, Nevelo Trefa, by the dead birds. We have Nevelo and Trefa there, and we have the word Nevelo and Trefa in the second pasuk, by the Chalif, right? So focusing now on the second pasuk. So apparently the word Trefa in the second pasuk is going to be applied in a totally different way. El Trefa, my boy, it's needed, Lemutei Tzmeya, to inform us that this exemption that Chalif has from, from being Tzmeya, only applies to a kosher animal. But the chilev of a dead non-kosher animal doesn't have that exemption in its tummy. How do we know? From the word treifa. How do we see it? Mishyesh b'mina treifa. Only a kosher animal which has within its species an issue, an isra of treifa. Kosher animal, which is a treifa, is us. So there we say, you know, that this uh, concept, this pasuk applies. I.e. that the uh, chilev of that dead animal is tar. The also as well as opposed to a non-kosher animal to begin with. Shame in a treifa, which doesn't have relevance to treifa. It's us for consumption anyway. There's no concept of it's a treifa by a non-kosher animal. So it's not included in this discussion. It doesn't have this exemption. The chalev of a dead non-kosher animal is tummy. So once you've come to this clarity, that the word treifa in Pasuk number two, it's not addressing the kosher animal that was shechted and discovered to be a treifa can't be rather it's coming to address a non-kosher animal to push that out hachanami let's go back to the first puzzle where it says nevelo and treifa by a dead bird the question was treifa what's treifa for extra it's unneeded so what there be there was coming to address a kosher bird that was shechted and then discovered to be a treifa it's told me no who says Perhaps it's not coming to address a shechted bird and support Rebuda's position. No! It's coming to exclude. Plus, like speaking about a dead bird being matami, you should know it only applies to a kosher bird that died, not a non kosher bird. That's all it's coming to tell you. Unrelated to our discussion about a treifa that was nishchat. How do we see to exclude a non kosher bird? Because the word treifa tells you. Only a kosher bird which has within its, you know, family relevance to treifa, to the isa treifa, as opposed to a non-kosher bird which is forbidden to begin with, unrelated to treifa. Doesn't have potential of isa treifa. Hachanami, lumutu, eftami, sheimina treifa. Well, says the Gemara, no. To teach us that? To tell you that eftami is not metami, that we already know from elsewhere. If Tamil Rabbi Rabbi knows us knows that from a different place. Milavela Nafkla. He learns that from the word Navela in this passage, not from the word Trefa, which leaves the word Trefa available to provide a source for his position. And that a, uh, a bird that was shechted and then discovered to be a Trefa is Matami, as we explained. How does Rabbi know to rule out a uh, dead bird which is non kosher? Rabbi the Navela Nafkla learns it from Navela. Son Rabbi the Imer Yochalte Nivlas Eif Tami Matami Bugad Misakli. How do we know? Maybe the uh, dead uh, non kosher bird that died is also Matami, Bebe Sabli Tamaloy, and Nevelo Trefaloy, Yoichal. We have another Pasuk which says, Don't eat a Nevelo Trefa. It's an extra Pasuk. It's coming to tell you that the, um, the Tumma says, Nevelo Trefaloy, Yoichal, the Tumma Bani Hashem. The Tumma. Applicable to a dead bird only applies to a kosher dead bird, not to a non-kosher dead bird. How do we see it from this pasuk? Because only the concept of isra nevel only applies to a kosher bird. A non-kosher bird is also to begin with, unrelated to isra nevel. So hence we know we're speaking about a kosher bird only. 
Nuvela trefa loy yoichal. Mishi is only a kosher type of bird where there's a concern of iser mishum matoich nuvela. The iser of eating a nuvela on that. So only that is metami. Only that type of bird has the tuma of a vesavli. Yotz as opposed to a non-kosher bird, which is aser before it became a nuvela. Sheini yisur mishum matoich nuvela. Iser is not because it became a nuvela. Ela mishum matoich tami. Rather, you shouldn't eat it because it's a tummy bird. So in that case, even if it died, it's not matami begad in vesavli. So he knows this from this pasuk. So that leaves the other pasuk available, as we explained, because it says treifa unnecessarily. To tell you that even a, a kosher bird that was shechted, shechted properly, but then was it discovered to be a treifa contra bida, it's metame begadim be'safli. Okay, so in summation, we have behema, we have oif. A behema that was discovered to be a treifa after shechita, all agree it's tahar. The pasuk bechiyamus mina behem only some behemus amatami not the ones that were shecht. That's a given. That's a fact. According to all shittos. What about a, a bird that experienced a similar experience? If it had shechita done to it and then was discovered to be a treif, or had malika done in a kachim setting and then discovered to be a treif, it's not permissible. It's not mutar bachila. What is it matame? Is it just plain dead or is it not really an avela? According to the mayor. We have a kavachaymer. If by the uh, behema shechita spears it, despite its heavy tuma, certainly by the bird, and likewise malika. Malika is based on the zayis teiras abeiva v'ayif. Compare behema to ayif, ayif to behema. The act which is typically machshul achila spears it of tuma, i.e. malika, even by a, a malika of a kachim bird. Rosh Hashanah says no. I have a different source. Nevelo treifa. Makes you tummy. The word trefa seems to be extra to tell you that even a trefa bird, that even a, a shechted bird that was discovered to be a trefa, is going to be metami. Now, all agree that the uh, tumor of oif, uh, bebeis ablia, only, by the way, only bebeis ablia, only applies to a kosher bird rather than to a non kosher bird. That's learned from um, either the word uh, trefa, according to Rameo, or contributed from the word novela in the second pasuk. That only a uh, kosher uh, species would have, which have these issues. Likewise, we'll have the tumma of Bebe Sablia. But a novella of a non kosher bird of an iftame is not Bethame Bugadim, Bebe Sablia. Okay, so that's it for today. We'll continue with this from tomorrow. Pick up uh, this discussion until its uh, final conclusion. All the best to you and Atzlacha Rabbah.